In this lesson, we will examine several applications of conics in the real world. Conic sections have been known since antiquity and they have fascinated humanity to such an extent that a lot of architectural structures have been built that remind us of their beauty and perfection. The circle was widely used in ancient Greece because of the divine character attributed to it. An example is the Tolos of Delphi, dedicated to Athena. Many typical Roman buildings, drawing inspiration from Greek canons, also have a circular plan, like the Pantheon, in which there is also a vertical circle inscribed. But in Roman architecture, the elliptical plant was especially used. Just consider amphitheatres, designed to seat as many viewers as possible around a rectangular field. In Renaissance architecture, we find them in domes, vaults and bows. However, be careful. In many cases, we do not have a perfect ellipse, but an oval, as is the case of St. Peter's Square in Rome. A historical misunderstanding accompanies these two seemingly similar figures. In fact, they differ from each other by geometric genesis. As you can see, an oval can be built with quite a complicated procedure that features the alignment of two circles. On the contrary, in order to draw an ellipse, we can easily use the gardener's method. But above all, what distinguishes the ellipse from the oval is the fact that the former can be described by a simple mathematical second degree equation. The latter cannot. Talking about ellipses, can you recognise the ellipse in the Tycho Brahe planetarium in Copenhagen? In fact, the ellipse can be correctly obtained also by sectioning a cylinder and not a cone. Now, we can't speak about ellipses without mentioning the orbits of planets, which were recognised as ellipses by Kepler. As was later demonstrated, anybody under the influence of an inverse square law force such as gravity follows a trajectory that can be represented as conic. Hence the trajectories of planets, moons and celestial bodies are all conic sections, ellipses, parabolas and hyperbolas. Consider one of Newton's famous old designs, with which he imagined that every object launched parallel to the ground in theoretical absence of friction and at a sufficient speed would never fall back to the ground. In the real world, friction is ever-present and the typical trajectory we can observe when we throw an object in our everyday life is a parabola, as in the launch of a cannonball. Parabolas are everywhere, from roller coasters to suspension bridges that span the longest distances possible, or to the parabolic jets of fountains. Consider the magic fountain of Montjuic in Barcelona, with its elliptical plant and its spectacular parabolic water games. It was designed by Antoni Gaudí, who said, the straight line belongs to men, the curved one to God. In his works, we can recognise that there are almost no straight lines. They are in fact mostly full of curves and organic patterns using the vitality of the object to form a building and also drawing a lot of inspiration from nature. In fact, according to him, the geometry of nature is made of three-dimensional composite surfaces such as hyperbolic paraboloids, hyperbolas, and also conoids, helixes, and catenary arches, and the artist has only to discover them. Numerous natural examples such as rushes, canes, and bones were used with great wisdom, knowing how to adapt the language of nature to the structural forms of architecture. Gaudí offers us the opportunity to highlight another frequent misunderstanding, the one between a parabola and a catenary arch, sometimes improperly called a parabolic arch. In fact, its name is just catenary because it has the shape assumed by an idealised hanging chain or cable under its own weight when supported only at its ends. These two curves look very similar, but their mathematical form is different. While the second degree equation can describe a parabola, the catenary is described by a transcendent one. It is difficult to recognise them at a glance and Gaudí used both of them, 
sometimes even in a combination of shapes, though the catenary arch is predominant. A lot of other modern architects have experienced the use of conics, last but not least, hyperbolas. Just think of the hyperboloid cooling towers often associated with nuclear power plants. We might at this point indulge ourselves in our search and find many other examples from the ancient to the modern era up to contemporary architecture. Let's take a lesson from Gaudí. Let's open our eyes and discover all the conics around us.